awarded during the high guy prize and thanks to the great work by the committee of IASS. Now please allow me to start my presentation and the title of my presentation is Path Planning for Rolling Locomotion of Polyhedral Tensor Grid Robots. And the outline of my presentation is shown on the screen. In part one, I'd like to introduce the background of the tensor grid robots. And in part two, uh, pre uh, the mathematical model for the path planning problem uh, was presented. And in section three, diagonal uh, algorithm is adopted to solve the path planning problem and uh, both the total distance traveled and the terrain future are considered. In section four, Typical examples are carried out with a uh, real-world six-bar density robot. Experimental validations of the proposed approach uh, uh, are, con are, con are conducted in section five. And finally, we draw the conclusion. So first, I'd like to introduce the background. Uh, in the field of modern architectures, large span structures have attracted much attention. The large span structures are applied to stadiums, theaters, uh, museums, and, uh, and other public buildings. Among these public buildings, some structures with rigid body motion enrich our imagination of architectures. For example, the tennis stadium of Hangzhou Olympic Center has a retractable roof, uh, which can be controlled if needed. In Fujian, China, a rotating stand called Da Hong Pao Impression is constructed. When the change of the stage, the rotating stand would turn around to provide the audience with the best perspectives. Also, the rigid body motion can be applied to the construction of a large span structure. The different parts of the structure are lifted step by step to find the shape of the structure. Flexible motion is also available in construction, uh, in the construction of the National Skating Stadium of China. The cable net was uh, assembled on the ground and then lifted to the top of the stadium. Uh, moreover, in the field of space and astronomy, some studies about motion structures have been carried out. Uh, the National Project Fast in China is constructed with adjustable back net cables as its base. Uh, the, adjust, the adjustable back net cables are designed to support the 500 meter uh, uh, aperture uh, spherical telescope. With the motion of the back net cables, the aperture, the aperture spherical telescope can be settled into different postures. Uh, motion structures can also be applied to the field of astronomy like the uh, deployable reflector and the mast and the lens hood. Besides, a uh, deployable structure is used in CUBE's uh, satellite ZGU2. A tensegrity structure is a self equilibrium system consisting, consisting of continuous tensile elements and uh, discrete compression elements. It's a, uh, it's a good candidate to, candidate to large span structures because of because of its lightweight, efficiency, and uh, controllability. The typical tensegrity-based large span structures include cable, cable dome, cable truss, tensegrity tower, cable beam, tensegrity bridge, and uh, suspended dome. Recently, the motion tensegrity, the motion tensegrity experienced the following history. Uh, after the, uh, at the very beginning, the study of motion tensor gravity focused on the transformable structure of vehicle. Then tensor gravity based motion robot is put forward. More recently, study of the studies of the dynamic ten tensor gravity for planetary exploration have been greatly developed. So what's the motivation of the development of the dynamic tensor gravity? Uh, in the past, we used to overcome the flexibility, control the shape of the structures, but now we'd like to make use of them. Also in the field of planetary uh, exploration and uh, for planetary ex exploration, a motion and uh, adaptable structural system is needed. It has the following properties and uh, advantages, uh, such as foldable in launching, 
flexible in landing, adaptable in motion, and uh, habit, uh, habitable in exploration. We can imagine that in the future, a 10th grade robot could be used as a planetary, uh, planetary rover. When arriving in the destination, it can be settled, into a, uh, settled to be a temporary residence. Uh, relative studies should be done by our engineers. So since the dynamic 10th grade robot is supposed to be a planetary rover and a residence, the first problem is how can a 10th grade robot move? Uh, as can be seen from the screen, there are two guide types for 10th grade robot. The first one is crawl, uh, crawling. The guide type is somewhat like the crawling of a, ca a, cat a caterpillar. During the process of the guide, there's no change of the support base. And the second, and the second is rolling guide, which is, uh, which is achieved by the deformation of the structure. When the centroid pe uh, projection moves out of the support, support base, the tensegrade robot starts to roll. Therefore, the support base changes during the rolling guides. A tensegrade structure can be actuated by the shape, uh, shape memory alloys with a shrinkage of 27%. Uh, it moves successfully with a rolling guide. The vector that EI indicates the actuating strategy of the tensegrade robot. Uh, next, the mathematical model is going to be set up. Uh, it's assumed that the tensegrade robot considered here has the following properties. Uh, first, the tension elements are only able to carry uh, tensile force. And the second, the compression elements are rigid and uh, able to carry both compression force and the tensile force. The third, the kinetic property of a basic guide is, in, is independent on the terrain of the land it's rolling on. The matrix B is the basic li uh, guide library, whose components are basic guides. A basic guide is a function of an actuation vector, that EI, and, uh, a state uh, uh, and a state vector, SI. The actuation vector describes the actuation of each actuator, and the state vector describes the initial context, uh, contact condition and the initial actuation of the guide. When the given basic guide, uh, the tensor grade robot changes its configuration and achieves rolling by the deformation. Uh, so after achieving the rolling of one guide, the next problem comes to us. How can we make the tensor grade robot move continuously? Uh, from the in introduction of the rolling guide, it's easy to imagine that the movement of a tensor grade robot has the following properties due to the polyhedral configurations. Uh, first, the motion distance of each guide of the tensor grade robot is predetermined. Uh, second, the tensor grade robot is only able to roll in some given directions. The continuous locomotion of the tensor grade robot is realized by, successful, uh, by successively applying a number of given basic rolling guides. So in order to achieve continuous locomotion from the given, from, from the given start point and the target, boy, target point, path planning is needed. Path planning is a crucial problem for, uh, for adaptive systems. Uh, one, uh, there are two types of the path planning problem. One is the path planning for shape control and the other is the path planning for locomotion. For the second type, and it's what we are discussing now. Uh, relative mutual methods have been developed in the field of conventional locomotive vehicles. However, these methods cannot be extended to spherical tensor grade robots because of the particular particularity of the locomotion of uh, of spherical tensor grade robots with rolling guides. So our work pro proposed a. Uh, basic and efficient approach to solve the path planning problem for tensor grade robots. Actually, a tensor grade robot can move continuously with a guide sequence consisting of a series of basic guides, like this given the initial point and the target point. The tensor grade robot would move step by step with a guide sequence. The cost of the case guide is CK which is determined by the basic guide and the, the terrain. Therefore, the total cost of guide sequence is the summary of the cost of each guide. 
Uh, the, the objective of the path planning is to find the minimum value of the total cost subject, subjected to two constraints. The first one, the distance between final position and the target position should be shorter than the position tolerance constant. And the second, the guides in guide sequence belong to a given basic guide library. So we have now from, we have now from the above introduction that the motion distance uh, of each guide is predetermined and uh, the and uh, the rolling direction is given uh, is limited in some given directions therefore assuming the position of the robot are presented by the center of its of its support base the possible position are series of concrete uh, of concrete position in the space uh, if a basic guide could link two points there would be a possible path between between these two points, and as shown on the left of the screen, the green port indicates the the, uh, the possible positions, and the orange dotted lines indicates the possible path. Here we use a directed graph G to describe the possible path, pos possible positions, and the possible paths. The directed graph consists of a position vertices matrix V and a cos matrix X uh, H. The position vertices matrix V records the number of each position point. The cost matrix is a Hadamard product of adjacent matrix and a terrain matrix, which will be introduced later. The components of the cost matrix are the cost of the, of the guide between two given position points. We can find the cost of each guide in the cost of matrix, and then the total cost is calculated. Our objective to, uh, is to find the path between the smallest cost, uh, cost uh, total cost. So, uh, since the mathematical model is is based on the directed graph, uh, how to obtain the direct directed graph is a key problem to path planning problem. Now, I'd like to take a typical six bar tensor grid, a six bar tensor graded robot, for example, to further explain the approach to obtain a directed graph. A six bar tensor grid consists of 12 nodes, six identical compression elements, and 24 identical ten tension elements, as shown on the left of the screen. Where the bold, line, uh, bold lines represent compression elements, and the thin lines represent tension elements. The six bar tensor grid has a configuration as an icosahedron. Uh, which consists of 20 triangles. Eight of, the, eight of them are closed equilateral triangles, uh, which have tension elements located on each edge, and the 12 of them are open isosceles triangles, which have tension elements uh, located on the two equal edges. The sixth bar tensor grid is able to stand stably on, on ground with one of the triangles at its base. There are two basic states on uh, of stand for the system in accordance with the type of the base triangle. One of them is called closed triangle state, where, uh, closed, uh, where a closed equilateral triangle 189 is used at the base, as shown at the top of the uh, as, a, as shown at the top of the screen. And the other state is called open triangle state, where an open uh, isosceles triangle 125 is used at the base, uh, as shown on the as shown at the bottom of the screen. In the upper uh, in the upper right corner of the screen, you can see that a tensor grid robot in closed state could roll to its three adjacent o uh, open triangle states, where the base triangle are indicated by the yellow, blue, and the green triangles. Uh, in the lower right corner of the screen, you can see that. The tensor grid robot can only roll to two adjacent uh, closed, sta closed triangle states, where the base triangle are indicated by the yellow and the blue triangles. Therefore, the triangles on the surface of the tensor grid robots are somewhat like the footprint, uh, like a series of footprints of the tensor grid robot. The surface of the icosahedron can be uh, unfolding to a graph as shown on the right of the screen, which is the assembly of the support basis of the tensor grid robots. 
the, unfo the unfolded graph can be further expanded like this. And it, it can be expanded to a grid map as shown on the right of the screen. Uh, well, uh, the unfilled triangles represent the areas with smooth terrain, and the shaded triangles represent the blind areas that cannot be reached by the tensor grid robot due to the inherent char characteristics of the system. And, and the dashed lines represent the position, uh, possible paths of the, of the tensor grid robot, and each dashed line, uh, each, and each dashed line segment corresponds to a possible guide. The geometrical length of a dashed line segment rep represents the stride of the corresponding guide. Corresponding guide. The, geometrical, uh, the geometric lengths of the dashed line segment are uh, equal to each other. For example, the possible guide of the system have a same stride. Note that the grid map can be expanded in infinitely. Here, a typical nine times nine uh, grid map is considered, and each triangle is named with a pair of sequence numbers, which are given in the left and the bottom of the map. The possible path graph can be uh, further modeled as a direct graph, as mentioned above. The components of the of the adjacent matrix E are determined by the length of the edges, and the, comp and the components of the terrain matrix A is determined by the terrain. Next, numerical simulations were, were done to show how do the proposed approach works. Uh, given the directed graph, the started vertex Vs and the target vertex Vt, the locomotion of paths with lowest cost can be found by the digesture algorithm. The, the flow of the algorithm is outlined on the screen. And on the right of the screen, our uh, four, four numeric, numerical simulations were carried out. The red circles indicate the start point, and the green dot indicates the target point. The red dotted lines indicate the final path. What's more, the white triangle indicates the smooth terrain, and the light gray triangles indicate the rough terrain, and the dark gray triangle indicates the very rough terrain. The, pla the black triangle indicates the, indicates the obstacles, and the grid coded triangles indicate the blind area which cannot be reached. The path found in, in example one is comprised of 15 guides and is the shortest one in all the examples. This is because there's no obstacles uh, in this area and the, and the, uh, the tensor grid robot can move much straighter than the other examples. The total cost of this path is 15, which uh, equals to the number of the guides used. And the path found in example two is, uh, is comprised of 17 guides, and thus the total cost equals to seven, 17. Uh, it's clearly shown on the, on the map that the path detours around the areas with obstacles. In example three, the rough areas cause the path to shift from the right side to the left side, and meanwhile, increase the number of guides from 17 to 19. Since the path used two guides to pass through a rough area, as shown on the, sc on the screen, a, a penalty factor of two is used for the cost of a guide moving in or move out of a rough area. The total cost uh, is equal to 20, 21, which is too larger than the number of the guides. The path found in example four is comprised of 23, uh, 23 guides. Both the, both the obstacles and uh, the very rough areas are avoided by the path as shown on the screen. As a result, the total cost of the path equals to the number of the user guides, uh, which is equal to 23. To verify the numerical results, experiments uh, with a physical prototype are carried out. <coughs> the prototype consists of tension act, uh, of consists of tension attendance actuators, connecting nodes, and the uh, controller and uh, power box. The actuators are also compression elements of the structure. 
The tendons and the actuators are connected by the connecting nodes, which are 3D printed. Other basic parameters, uh, parameters of the prototype are shown on the screen. As can be seen from the video, the robots stand up and start walking. The prototype is designed to be controlled wirelessly. And also, there are feedbacks from the prototype to the control program to the control program, providing the actual actuation of each, actu of each actuators. Uh, with a given actuating strategy, the prototype could move continuously in a zigzag way. And after the locomotion, the robot is, fold is folded. We also do some other experiments to examine the performance of the tensor grid robot. Uh, it can roll over an obstacle when it can roll over an obstacle in the height of about 10% of the diameter of the tensor grid robot with three basic guides, as shown on the top of the screen. And uh, also, it can cross over the ditch with the width of about 17% of the diameter of the structure. Uh, and also, it can finish this work with three basic guides. Next, uh, next experiments were done to verify the numerical results. For each, num uh, for each numerical examples, uh, three tests are performed. A typical test for each example is shown on the screen. The position of the prototype at the end of, at the end of each guide is indicated by solid points, and the path of the prototype is described by the lines connecting the solid points. The distance between start vertex and, uh, and the target vertex is about 86 centimeters. This is the result of example one. The tensor grid robot moves along the front path and uh, reaches the target with uh, 15 guides. The experiment two showed that the, ten the tensor grid robot can avoid the, uh, can avoid the obstacles by following the front path. Uh, compared to experiment two, uh, rough areas are considered in, in experiment three. The tensor grid robot works over one grid triangle rather than three uh, grid triangles. Even if the distance of the paths in experiment two and three are the same, the cost of two found paths are different. In, example, uh, in experiment four, the tensor grid robot avoids both obstacles and the rough areas and find the pass with the lowest cost. Even the distance of the front pass is longer than some other pass, but the cost is the lowest. Also, we make some comparisons between the numerical results and the, exper and the experimental results. It shows that in, this ex in these examples, the prototype generally rolls along the numerical path as well. The incremental errors are within a tolerant range of about three centimeters. Yeah, finally, we draw the conclusion that the path planning of rolling locomotion of polyhedral tensor grid robots can be modeled as finding, uh, as finding the path with the lowest cost in a graph with a given adjacent matrix. And the key to path planning problem is to obtain the possible path graph and establish a mathematical formulation for the possible path graph. Uh, numerical examples on a six-bar dense graded robot and the corresponding experiments with a physical prototype are carried out. And finally, uh, we believe that tensor graded ro robot uh, with rolling guides is a good candidate for a travel system. Uh, that's all about my presentation, and thank you for your, for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lu, for your very interesting presentation, and congratulations again for the Hangai Prize you received. Now we have some uh, minutes for questions or comments from the floor. So, who is the first speaker? First person? Wishing to ask something? Yes, over there, please. So, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Very nice. Uh, I was uh, wondering how your prototypes compares to the NASA prototype. Uh, 
uh, the difference between my prototype and the NASA's? Yes. Uh, the, the actuators is different. Actuators is different. We use uh, an, an, uh, the, the actuators uh, as the compression elements of the structures. But NASA, uh, from what I, I know, uh, they use uh, uh, the cables, yeah, which can be uh, can be short, shorted or can be longer uh, in, in in his structures. That's different. Yeah. Next. Yeah. Uh, this is a very interesting topic indeed. And yeah, watching you. the videos, I was I was wondering about the system integrity of this of this robot. Like in an extraterrestrial environment, it can be subjected to well large heat gradients for one, or it can even walk on soft sand and dust. Unlike uh, what you were testing on, uh, like Mike Marble, how does this, uh, well, the soft surface might affect its 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 movement and its path? Uh, you mean the the the, mo the movement on the soft surface? Yes. Yeah? On uh, in my in my research, uh, relative works are, were, were not done, but uh, I think uh, we can find a basic guide to solve this problem. Uh, relative works were were done by my. By my colleagues, uh, he she used the dy dynamic method and uh, genetic algorithm to to uh, to solve this problem. He can find some uh, find uh, the basic guide which is suitable for the which would fit the uh, soft areas. I think, yeah. Uh, more questions? Yes, please here. <clears throat> Hello. So you base your path planning on the regular oscillation on a planar surface, but on a curved landscape, how would you adapt this? Because you cannot get the same triangle mapping the whole surface. How would you change your graph construction? Uh, you mean in different areas, the constraints? If you have curvature on your surface, because you cannot have the same triangle getting this regular oscillation of a curved surface, so you cannot have this um, you would have overlaps over your graph. Sorry, I, I don't understand. Uh, so, um, uh, so because you use the same triangle to map the full surface because it comes from your, the, the faces of your polyhedron. Oh, you mean how, uh, how can I use these triangles to cover all the areas in the space? If you have curvature on the, on the landscape. I'm oh, sorry, I, I really don't understand. Well, maybe yeah, so it's good to, to try to um, um, ask and, receive, and answer the question after that in the lunch, because probably it's a little bit more difficult here. Do we have some further question or comment to Mr. Lu? Well, if not, uh, thank you very much for your nice presentation. Yeah, thank you.